Jason Adashowitz on the vibes and John Herndon on the drums. We heard Double Demon, Voodoo Sync, and Triple Hex. Out on Delmark, Rob Mazurik, Jason Adashowitz on the vibes, John Herndon on the drums, John, Rob Mazurik on uh, uh, the cornet. Double Demon is the title of the CD. On August 27th, from 10 to 1 at the Urban Ecology Center, learn how to extend your harvest qu quantity. Excuse me. Mm, uh, harvest time. Huh? And harvest uh, by strategically spacing out plantings, especially greens. Learn about the wide array of greens that can be grown nearly all year round and how to enjoy homegrown broccoli at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Mm. Call 964-8505 to register. And uh, keep in mind... This is in a little intro. You can. Are you going to play with us? Are you going to speak? If you, yeah. <coughs> no, I have no time issue. We usually go. We. Yeah. Huh? We're going to eat. Quick eat. Right? Yeah, we're going to quick eat. But I thought what we would do is. 45 minutes, we're using 40 minutes and 20 minutes for questions. Yeah. We always have questions. Yeah, right. So it feels, you know, whatever feel it feels. You want me to get up and do the questions, whatever. All right, everybody. Just kind of go and take their seats. Is this on? Yes? Good afternoon. Um, welcome. Uh, I'm Reinhold Martin, the director of the Temple Hoyne Buell Center for the Study of American Architecture, which you might have noticed is at least nominally the host institution for this other institution, since we're talking about the eighth season. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. eight years now? Yeah, sorry. Um, and uh, I think it will become self-explanatory uh, what you're in for, so I'm not going to, uh, <laughs> you know, um, delay uh, that any further. Only to add uh, just a quick a couple of notes from the Buell Center, since there's some things I'll take the opportunity, since I have a captive audience, to let you know about a couple of things going on uh, Besides this, that, that, that we've been working on this summer that will appear on your screens in the fall. Uh, one is uh, an exhibition that will open on September 12th, uh, a date you might recognize, um, uh, called Public Matters. It's about New York, architecture in New York after 9-11. It's not about Ground Zero. It's about what happened in New York after Ground Zero and the various projects. Uh, the kind of behind the scenes look at the uh, at, at architecture as a matter of public contestation uh, in uh, in this city uh, in the last ten years, um, and that will come up in the gallery. Uh, I sorry in the in the cafe over here, and there will be a, a sort of party slash uh, roundtable discussion on September twelfth uh, when the show opens. Um, another uh, event to look forward to is. Um, is happening on September 17th at PS1 uh, at MoMA. We're collaborating with our colleagues at the Museum of Modern Art 
on an exhibition uh, and workshop exhibition uh, titled Foreclosed. Uh, it's about, it, the subtitle is Rehousing the American Dream. I hope that's relatively explanatory. Uh, there's, uh, there's gonna be open studios. So the, there are five teams of architects working on a series of suburban sites and housing uh, and suburban sites around the country who will be uh, presenting their work in a kind of open studio fashion uh, on the 17th, September 17th at MoMA. So you're all invited to come and it's lots of fun. You can go walk around the PS1 studios. And after that, there'll be a formal event with some uh, fairly recognizable figures. Um, so uh, you're, I officially invite you to that. But in the meantime, here we are with other uh, more than recognizable figures. I don't need to therefore introduce them uh, to you other than saying that on my far left, uh, is um, the Charles Walthamy Professor in Practice at Yale University, Peter Eisenman. And, and on his... And on his right is uh, the Dean of the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation at Columbia, uh, Mark Wigley. Uh, <laughs> And the, the rules of the game here are essentially that there is a, a theme or a sort of nominal theme. In this case, uh, the, the name of the game is Project Versus Practice or Project and Practice. Uh, and, uh, and to get the discussion going, Peter is going to uh, make a, a sort of summary or a sort of statement or a series of provocations uh, to which uh, no doubt Mark will have a series of thoughts of his own, and, and it will, as you'll see, uh, kind of go from there. There'll be about, I'd say, 45 minutes or so of, of discussion amongst our protagonists, and, and then uh, that will give you time to prepare your questions because uh, the, um, the sparks perhaps can uh, start flying even higher if, uh, if you raise some, um, some questions of your own. So, uh, so I will, without uh, further um, intervention, I'll just uh, deliver the floor to, uh, to my colleagues. Uh, and and uh, welcome then again to round eight of uh, yeah. <laughs> Eisenman Wigley. Thanks so much. Thanks, Reinhold. Um, I'm not certain whether this is a 10 rounder, 12 rounder, or 15 rounder. Mark Wigley assured me that it was going to be a 10 rounder, but I ain't so sure anymore. It sounds like a 15 rounder. It sounds like a 15 rounder, so it's a heavyweight title fight. Um, uh, what you realize uh, when the numbers start to build up and there's clearly something going to happen at the end that you better be more serious and uh, be less foolish than one normally is on a, these occasions in the summer. Uh, so uh, I actually prepared a sort of beginning uh, to get into the subject and Mark is uh, said that it's all right if I speak for seven or eight minutes uh, <coughs> as a uh, beginning to this. Last year, uh, we talked about uh, the theme was genius loci, loci versus zeitgeist. Uh, and basically, uh, I would argue that both of those ideas represent alternative projects. And so I thought, well, what then defines a project? And I thought that would be a very useful uh, beginning since uh, the, the last year's talk were, in a sense, subsets of a larger issue, project versus practice or project or practice. And today I would like to define uh, historically uh, what uh, I would say is a project, and I'm going to describe six, quickly six projects, um, and uh, each of the projects contains a critical moment uh, that is critical of the project that went before, and you will see this uh, uh, develop. The first project, uh, I would argue, uh, was um, Greek versus Roman space, uh, and it was essentially articulated by Vitruvius in the uh, first century. That uh, his ten books would, were, for me, the first uh, conscious project of architecture, where he characterized and codified uh, uh, Greek space, 
the orders, uh, adherence, what I would call rigid adherence uh, to uh, matters of proportion, <coughs> uh, uh, certainly elaborating a syntax of what would be constituted as Greek space, and certainly the first mention of uh, genius loci, i.e. the siting of buildings. <laughs> there was not an idea of zeitgeist at that time. The second project uh, was the project of the Renaissance and humanism and uh, was characterized by Alberti, uh, who also, in a sense, wrote uh, 10 books of architecture. But these were a critique of Vitruvius, um, and uh, they were, in a sense, uh, saying that Vitruvius was understood in when he said firmitas to mean uh, solid solidity or construction. And what Alberti said, what he really meant was that it should look like uh, it was uh, solid and, and constructible and structural. So that the idea of representation came in, the idea of uh, history, uh, Alberti said that the most important thing for any discipline was its his history. Um, and he introduced uh, the idea of uh, part to whole relationships, that is the idea of consinitas, where he says a house is a small city, a city a large house. That was the, what I would call the second project of architecture. Um, it was followed by, uh, in the 16th century, the Cinquecento, by people like Palladio uh, studying uh, antiquarian uh, conditions and uh, et cetera. And uh, also uh, the introduction of the idea of Roman space uh, as opposed to uh, Greek space. The third project uh, I want to argue was the project in the 17th century of Claude Parot, who uh, wrote in his Ordonnance of Architecture a, a critique of Alberti uh, and uh, Vitruvius. And the first time that it was argued that there was an, or an alternative to the Greek ideals. That is, that uh, the Greek ideal, uh, as it was understood by then in the uh, 17th century, wasn't ideal at all, that the measurements that people had made were, were problematic and that uh, one need not obey the syntax of, of Greek. And what he, he introduced several things in a very radical discourse for the 17th century. One, that the Greek was uh, an idea of imitation, that is imitating uh, the rules of, of, of of classical proportion versus invention. And he said that uh, the Renaissance was an idea of invention, uh, whereas the, the, the Greek was today in his time an idea of imitation. He imit then he in introduces in this the idea that we must be up to date, we must be an aesthetically progressive in the spirit of our time. He, he elaborates a critique of stasis, uh, that is a critique of rules that are forever uh, c uh, conjugate beauty, um, and therefore introduces an idea of the zeitgeist, even though the actual term doesn't come about until the 18th uh, century. Um, uh, this uh, project of, of Perros uh, leads to the fourth project, uh, which is uh, the project of, of, of Piranesi, where uh, you get for the first time a, a, a joining of written texts and uh, invention and images uh, as a, a, an idea. Uh, that sustains uh, a project in the um, 18th century. And uh, then you have uh, people, the, the, the critique of, of Piranesi by people like uh, Winkelmann and Leroy and Lodely, and there's this 
argument, now again in the 18th century uh, of Greek versus uh, Roman uh, space. So that argument comes back, but it's basically now in the 18th century an argument based on uh, text and image. The fifth project for me, uh, and of course I'm collapsing uh, the history of uh, 2,000 years into uh, six projects, uh, but they're, you know, they're subsets of these, um, is that theory and history become one in the early 19th century. They become, uh, as it were, their own discipline that Tafuri will talk about, that, uh, that his historians and theoreticians shouldn't be uh, doing what he called operative criticism, but should uh, understand their, their work as uh, a, a work uh, parallel to the work of uh, the project of architecture so that the project of history theory uh, becomes important in the 19th century along with romanticism which comes out of, has its roots in uh, Perrault. Now, if we get to the sixth project, which is that if you no longer want to be involved in the dialectic of Roman versus Greek, invention versus imitation, modernism versus classicism, uh, genius loci versus zeitgeist. If one says that these dialectical projects are problematic today, um, there is, I believe, an alternative to believing in progress, uh, believing in uh, sight, believing in uh, classical rules, believing in uh, modern whatever. And that is, uh, is the idea of the autonomy of architecture itself. And to me, that is a, uh, a project which uh, has become, uh, after the uh, problematics of, of dialectics, that the internal uh, searching for uh, what becomes, what is architecture uh, as opposed to being defined externally can be defined internally. Um, I would argue that the project of autonomy uh, can be described in the following way. Uh, that is, uh, I, I'm saying, I'm now going to specifically talk about a single project. Uh, uh, as opposed to um, projects like sustainability, parametrics, computation, etc. Uh, I believe that the project of autonomy is where the architect and architecture defines the world as uh, is given, whereas in a practice of, of architecture is the where the world defines the architect and architecture. And I would argue that sustainability is a practice which defines architecture and the architect. Uh, in other words, it becomes uh, an excuse for uh, consumption. I would argue that if we go back in history, the difference between a practice and a project is that Borromini, to me, had a project Bernini had a practice, Bernini being the most powerful architect uh, in the world since Philip Johnson. Um, since? Yeah, <laughs> since Philip Johnson. <laughs> and uh, of course, Philip Johnson, while he thought he had a project, had a practice. Um, and um, I think Aldo Rossi had a project and Jim Sterling had a practice. So it's not a question of quality or uh, importance, it's a que question of the attitude toward uh, the culture and the society. The final thing that I want to say about this didactic overview of the difference between the two uh, is that I believe a school is a place where one should understand the differences, not which one is better, but the differences between having a project and having a practice. Uh, and uh, many of my friends, uh, and most of my friends, I believe, have practices uh, and, and defined, uh, are defined 
by those practices, that is where the world defines what they in fact end up doing. Um, with that, I, uh, as an introduction, uh, okay. I, uh, I, if you, you know, there's a lot to disagree with. So the gentleman has served. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, An easy serve. Yeah, uh, it's quite hard to hit a soft serve. Yeah. Um, it's like eating soft ice cream. Yeah, I on mean, a hot day. as you know, I, I, I wouldn't buy into the. Um, mm. That's why I did it. Into the sort of uh, grand narrative of one line with the six steps and all of that. Um, well, I left, I mean, there are any number but of even if what And a, even if we added a million, um, it's. It's suddenly at the end there was this thesis, right, about um, project versus practice. Yeah. Which, when you first said it, sounded like project was associated with autonomy, right? Mm, it sounded that way. Yeah. Like you said, the project of autonomy yeah. is. Yeah. And then very quickly, the opposition was autonomy, uh, w was practice project. Right. And then it turns out that actually we can wind back right. in time right. and find that. So. So in a way, my reaction is is uh, against the, the historical narrative and just grabbing hold of the um, opposition between pr between project and practice. Which, as you say, it the the, the project defines the world, defines the yeah, world, right. and in the practice, the, the world, world defines. The practice. Let's say the practice or the, yeah. pro the project. So, right. so. In, in that sense, then the b one of the big things we have to figure out then is what the hell is a world in order yeah. to understand what this difference is. And, and of course, there are different senses of the word world. What one sense would be... Well, let's take the stock market going down as the world, <laughs> for one. I mean, we don't have to define the world. To d I mean, uh, it's the economy. It's the political world, yeah, the cultural. Yeah. I mean, it's all those things that are not architecture. I think the stock market is a project. But we, we, we would have, but we, we, we would have, but Not we'd the have way it rolls. Right, but we'd have to argue through first, I mean, let, let's argue through yeah. the opposition, sure. which yeah. I like, Yeah. right? I mean, I think um, a lot, but a world could be, in w one sense of the world is it's the world of, it's objects, stuff, matter, right? Um, but another sense of the world, which is maybe more relevant, is 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 the world is is that which has no outside. It's the world. It's everything. It's my world, right? And and th and if it has no outside and inside, then there's no such thing as more relevant because all of it is relevant. Right. So and 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 that's, that's why it, the word autonomy it. would resonate. You see, because right. because it, if the world is that which has no outside, it's the world. Yeah. And then to say uh, a project defines the world, it means it defines yeah. e everything, which means then that an architect who, who's doing a project is using something relatively small, like a commission or right. a book or whatever, to create uh, an idea everything. And, yeah. that, and, that, and that surely is, is a, like a major impulse uh, of architects, right? And <laughs> for sure, right? For sure. Well, it's not, not, not just architects, it's a major impulse. Uh, impulse of economists, of political uh, people. I mean, uh, they're all trying to define the world. In right, a but staying with our union, or the union of the okay, architects. Okay, union of architects. Um, that means a project, I mean, of course the word project has, is to throw, to yeah, project. project. Yeah. So in, in that understanding uh, of the project. Which is not projective, by the way. Right, right. <laughs> Just to make it sure. It means that to, to 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 make a project, to have a project, to throw, it's not to throw, for example, a design into the world, but it's to throw a world. A world. You That's throw right. a world. That's right. right. Um, and therefore, in, in, to, to say it in a kind of clumsy way, if a world is that which has no outside, um, has no walls, no, no limits, the, the architect in this case is using limits, walls and things, to produce the sense or the effect or the dream or the reality of that which has no walls, an entire world, right? I um, mean, it's a, a, let's say a 
it's either a metaphor or a metonymy of an entire world. It's not the entire world. It is an idea, and like a painter paints, I mean, there are painters that have projects, there are painters that have practices. They try and define the world through a canvas, let's say, clearly you can't. So the architect, just because he builds, is no different than a poet, uh, a writer. Uh, I mean, you know, right. we were talking before with Rhino, a Wagner attempted to define the world in his project. They weren't, he wasn't just writing operas. <coughs> he was defining a Geist that he wanted to do through <coughs> music, through the operatic form, to define uh, a world. Right, so that, so that has him way down the project end. Right. Like one of the issues here is, is, right. is project and practice as you define it, two kind of utterly different alternative realities, or is it a spectrum? Spectrum. Um, and I think the moment, you, the moment you say, for example, that, that it's not to project the entire world, right. you're kind of moving down the line towards well, well, the yeah, practice. But you have to be didactic when you're speaking for 10 minutes to define what project is. Uh, I mean, you, you know it when you see it, okay? okay. okay. I mean, let, let's put it that way. Uh, I would say, for example, Rafael Moneo, uh, who's doing a building here, had a project, right? I would say Bernard Schumi had a project, right? Uh, I would say Oriol Boigas, uh, as opposed to Moneo, had a practice. He didn't have a project, right? even though he was concerned with urbanity and larger scale projects than Moneo. Right. Uh, Moneo had a, had a project, a vision of the world uh, as he saw it. Right. Uh, so I would think you could, you could take any number of people uh, who doesn't mean the quality is better or worse, but uh, there's a project. Right, but I, I'm still back at a more kind of Okay. Military position, which is like, okay, how to line up these uh, uh, divisions? Yeah. Because if if staying with the with the more extreme understanding, if if the architect with a project is 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 throwing a world, and that is to say, architecture is the is the is the mechanism for generating a world, right? right? Uh, defining a world, you say, or defying. Right. Or defying, militant. Right. 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 So if, if that's the gesture, right, which is to sort of throw a world, which, right. which I think mm -hmm. is a bit, you know, it, it's very easy to, to see that fitting into a lot of what we do, right. and think about and admire. Mm -hmm. um, what our history is It's made not of, clear, by the way. It, it, and it's a question for you, I guess, is if this is the case, just staying on the project side and forgetting about the practice side for a moment. Practice side is easy. Right, but do do we live in a project? No. Right. No. You, you, the, what follows from that is that you don't live in a. We project. We don't live in a poem either. Right. So. Yeats is poetry. Right. So you throw a world. A world is not an interior. No. A right? world is, does not have an outside. So no. it doesn't have an outside. Yes, it doesn't, doesn't have an inside, inside either. So you don't. Uh, uh, neither is a project thrown in, into the world. It no. is the throwing of a world. Correct. But you don't. It's not an. The, 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 it's not an. It's not an invitation to live in the world. No. Right. Now, if you run, to, if you run to the to the to the to the other end, to the practice side, where the, where the work well, of the. Can I go back? Can yeah, I yeah. Just uh, w before we go to the other side, one little footnote. My, my argument would be that, despite everything, the history that we understand. Right. Uh, that constitutes our discipline that throws the world has always been a history of project, not of practice. In other words, there were many French architects doing little white houses in the 20s and 30s, but we remember Le Corbusier. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There were a lot of others that built many more. They were probably just as nice to live in, right. uh, just as economical or whatever, just as image-wise as good, but they didn't have a project. Lourça, uh, Malais de Vence, uh, <coughs> et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to them, and there was something different. So I would argue then the same with Borromini and Bernini. Bernini was, was absolutely powerful, had all the commissions, et cetera, 
Bormini had very few, yet I would say that Bormini had a project and Bernie didn't. Uh, that doesn't mean they weren't, one wasn't a good, it was just the way the world, they defined the world that they found, right. okay? So I'm saying is that our history seems to re, re, resound with, uh, resonate with architects as the history of poetry or the history of music, uh, any discipline is in fact made up of people who had a project. Okay. So now we can go to. Pra uh, so on the practice side, a little bit the opposite of each of those conclusions, right? That that um, that not only is practice, as you you define it, is somebody who not only allows the world to shape what they do, but yeah. that's the quality yeah. they most mm -hmm. appreciate in what they do. It is the quality. Right. So th that person sees themselves as working in the world, being worked on by the world. Right. And and <coughs> it is an it is in like it is a you you so in the same way we said that you don't live in a project you uh, do live in practice right right and that's the sort of okay that's the, so this this is how the stereotype works and it sounds great and it sounds like it splits all those couples that you uh, more or less and you say you like um, both sides of the equation but oh I do I like Sterling enormously but it's like saying some of my best friends. Uh, <laughs> are practitioners, right? They are. Right, but you, but they, deep. They very much are. Right, but if all of that would disappear. My dean. Careful. Um, well, it, it, if all of that was to disappear, you wouldn't grieve. Oh, uh, no, if, no, you can't define project unless you have the other. They both, they self, they define one another. Right, but if I said to you, no, I would if you lose, lose all of the project of side, you would grieve. Firstly, you'd be gone. You'd yeah. be the very first project, thing to be. Say, don't say projective. You said it project. was a slip. Yeah, please don't do that. If we take out the project, project. Right. Out. Right. Gone. Why? You are the first to go. Uh, right. Yeah. Despite being the professor, Charles Gothney professor in right. practice. That's a, right? a subterfuge. Which is another variation. Um, you would grieve. So in other words, you wouldn't, uh, you well know. My own demise, you betcha. Yeah. So you would say, the, uh, playing for the project side as you do, you would say, yeah, we need the straight guy. We need yeah, absolutely. practice in order to be as interesting as we are. But the practice side <coughs> doesn't say we yeah. need. No, they don't. The project side, right? <laughs> no, so, so, so that's, this a, that's a fallacy on the practice side. Right. So, so uh, all sort of, as it were, need yeah. is associated with the worldly side, with, with the no practice question. side. Absolutely. They're in the, in the world of need. We are needed, society needs us, yeah. we provide what people need, right. et cetera, and they don't need it. The they don't need it. It's you. other. Right. The project. So, so in, in, this, in this environment. Only our discipline. Right. To so sustain the discipline. And the society could care less. The world out there, to sustain our discipline, they would, I mean, I would never say to a client, I'm, I'm doing this, it's going to cost you a little money to sustain our discipline. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It doesn't go that. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't sound good. Okay, so so far we, we can... We can. There's, it's, so there's an imbalance. You're saying it's yeah. not dialectical. Not at all. Not at all. It's not a spectrum, by the way. There's a schnitt somewhere. Right. Um, now, getting back to the schnitt... Um, All of this is like all of this. I kind of want to say, yep, um, but it doesn't quite work. Well, can it, I, can I just ask you? Let's go back to Reinhold this morning, saying he loves a certain team because of the way the, the beauty of the game, right? Yeah. Uh, the guy who owns the team could care less about the beauty of the game. He <laughs> wants to know: Does he put people in? The, does he make money, right? And so the, I would say the project of of football is the beauty of the game, if you want to take it like that. But the beauty of the game uh, doesn't matter to the guy who owns the team, to the world. Yeah, but the team is owned by its fans. <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, the team is owned, you know, the uh, arsenal that you're talking about, um, 
def defines and and is 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 an artwork. It's it's a piece of art. It's 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 a kind of painting. Arsenal is no, it's a painting. It's really a painting. As, as Reinhold said, Arsenal is defined by media. In other words, uh, they they nominate certain players to our stars. As Reinhold said, who wants to see uh, X or Y? You know. Yeah, yeah, but the media is just a, is a surrogate word for the fans. Okay, right? so, so it's defined by them. All but right. it's an art pro But basically, it's an art project, and and it, impossible to say who produced this artwork. Impossible to say whether it's a product of mm, fair. You know, but let's go back to our. I mean, let's yeah. go back to the other. No, but it, is, it fits very well. It actually fits very well because it could be argued that, and that's what I'm, and I think it's what also Reinhardt was saying. Arsenal is a project. Yes. You see, it's a thought. It's the thought, and this is what the this is the brilliance of Barcelona, by the way, because because Barcelona has done this trick, which is to treat the game as a project. That is to say, its sheer beauty is in theory more important than any yeah. outcome. But they're also the very best team, so they have all and the outcomes. They're outcome. also almost broke. This has entirely tramped. By but, the way, but yeah. Barcelona has traumatized the world of football. Yeah, they have in, because in the in idea of such beauty being also success. No, they're is not success. Very that's the thing. Wow. Because they're almost broke. All right. I mean, to be continued. To no, be no, continued. But, but let's say they are a project. All right. Let's say for yeah. a minute that that they're a project. You you're now defining that uh, that it is a project concerns an idea, whereas to practice. You can have beauty and the work that you produce, but it may not constitute an idea. That is, in some way. Whereas, uh, the, I mean, lots of teams can play well. They can beat Barca. Uh, I would say that Real Madrid, for example, is does not have a project. Barca has a project, but they may play as well. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I mean, I, I, I'm willing to, to go out and say that. Um, so on Sunday, on Sunday, in the first round of the Super Cup, we're going to see the collision between art in the form of Barca yeah. and money in the form of Real. Well, we, and, you'll see what and you'll see what happens. But, but, uh, and what do you think is going to happen? No, 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 let's... let's <laughs> Yes, it, what you just said is true. It seems to me that that idea that the, the project team, yeah. since we're into foot teams, pro the project team is the ideas team. But there are two uninteresting reasons that that's true. The first is we get to decide which words go. You see, the the, the project team is also the words team. Right? We get to we get to make the classifications. The world says the world team says. By the way. By the way, we are in a university setting. We're not in the parliament or in the Congress. Uh, I noticed, we're not I in the Tea Party meeting. Uh, we are in a, right, a different kind of words meeting. Right. right. So we're going to get back to the school. But the project team is also the words team because the practice team says, actually, the Oops. world yeah. talks right. and we listen. There so you the, go. So the practitioner says, I listen. Mm -hmm. What I'm really good at doing is listening. Mm -hmm. I listen to the world and I modulate what he the world tells me. He thinks he's good at listening. That's a fallacy also. Yeah, well because <laughs> you could say his project is a project of listening. Well, the and he <laughs> ain't very good at that. The paradox is <laughs> the paradox is, is that the is that the practitioner says that they only listen, but right. they say it. That's not right? true. Um, so they they yep. speak the theory of listening, right? Uh, the project team says we have the word, so we say that the word idea is with us. Yes. So that's the first uninteresting reason that yes, the word, the word idea. But the very idea of ideas is the idea of project, because right. the idea is that which could be in the world, that which precedes the world, world, that which could generate the world, that which could be lost in the world. So in, in, the, in, in, the, in the kind of uh, Plato and on sense, the world of ideas is exactly the world beyond the world, right? So, of course, the project team is on the side of that which leaves the world behind, that which may come before, may come after, may come during, and so on. So, yes, we have the ideas, 
But in the end, that's just uh, that's like a, we're just re reassuring ourselves right. that we have the best uniforms. No, I mean, no, it's not, no, let's it's not great. Let's let's take this setting. I, I want to just bring us back to this particular setting. We have you and I being involved here, sitting here, a responsibility to point out the difference between the two, not to tell these people you all should be practice people or you should be project people, but to say here's X and here's Y. And either one of them is a viable, I, I believe, viable in the world. And I think it's the university, not the practice or the project, that is it's not Rafa's responsibility or Bernard's responsibility uh, or Venturi's responsibility to articulate that difference. It's, it's our responsibility and our roles here to articulate what those differences are, to open up those possibilities, because not everybody can either practice or have a project. In other words, not possible. And to say that schools are only about project is a, is a fallacy, just as to say that a school what the ideal of a school, as the school that I'm, for example, involved in, has always been to create uh, <coughs> practice. practice, okay? So I think the role of the school, whether it's Columbia, wh wh or let's say a non-state institution, that mm -hmm. is a non-institution mm -hmm. -inst that has a responsibility to the discipline as opposed to the, s to the society, Right. as this one does, right, as opposed to Kansas or uh, Nebraska or whatever, uh, has a responsibility to the society. Uh, that's why they're paying for their education. Uh, we, in, in this school and in, in other schools like it, have a responsibility to point out the, the disciplinary differences uh, that are at stake in, in either one. That's why I raised the issue today, not one is better than the other, uh, right. uh, one is right, one is wrong, but that there is disciplinary distinction. Right, but I feel like that between you and I anyway, we haven't quite got all the wrinkles of the project versus practice oh, I don't figured think out. We're, we're never going to do that today. So, <laughs> no, but let's say we haven't even come close. No. That would then allow us to make our kind of commentary on what might be good or bad for schools to do with this. Well, right. I was arguing... So I think we're one step short. And okay. what, I want, what I'm Go trying ahead. to say is that, is that not only is it um, unevenly balanced in the sense of it's not symmetrical. No. Uh, as you've just implied, it's also um, a, a numbers game. That part of, this, part of the logic of what you've just described, and I agree with, will mean by definition there will be very few people on the project side and many, many people on the practice side. Uh, and this is just an uninteresting consequences of the fact that, oh. for example, if everybody was uh, on the so-called project side, that would be normative practice. That would be. But right? the, the question is the aspiration for project should be in everybody's, uh, uh, at least uh, as an aspiration. Okay, okay. But, but just stay with this thought that... that I understand that, that if everybody were in the project side or vice versa. Right. Before, so before we judge, like good practice, bad practice, yeah. nah, before we judge, what we're learning so far is in this opposition between project and practice, the way you framed it, um, and like I could do it differently and people in the audience would do it differently again, but in the way you framed it, there will always be many people on the practice side. That's part of the argument. The sense of the normative, the sense of the world. The no, sense you, you're saying that. I'm, I'm arguing that in in uh, a production consumption society, the society, the the institutions have a responsibility of producing consumers, and practice architects uh, are are involved in production of consumption. So uh, I I don't know why the numbers have to be the way they are. In other words, well, I think it follows from the argument. You see, it, it follows do from they? does it? Yes, it follows from 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 that at a professional level, that project will not only mean, um, um, let's say, uh, the the projecting of a new world, the throwing of a world for a hypothetical mm -hmm. uh, public or community or client or whatever. It will also mean uh, uh, throwing a new discipline, right? So that so it will mean uh, the 
that. Well, a critique of old discipline. Right. So, so it's just a, it's just a kind of uh, uh, uninteresting, a matter of definition that there will be on the so-called worldly side more, uh, there will, uh, and on the project side less. Well, let's ask like you. like for example, there is there is. Um, but but you're 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 only limiting it. To, I would argue. And, and I'm certain there are people here that are in academia that there are architectural historians that have a project and there are architectural historians that practice the history of, you know, their, their craft. They, they look for uh, archaeological, antiquarian uh, impulses, etc. Right, and I would say by definition and in a not very interesting way, there will be more of the... Those. The, more of those than the others. Because that's partly how the ones who have a project define themselves as having a project as being in a, in a minority. But we're now going to say that at this institution, there Not are yet. more. <laughs> we're still going around no, no, the park. We're gonna get, we're gonna get, I want to get to this in, because there are more art historians at this institution than have a project. That's why they're here. So we're talking about an institution that is a nurturer of project. It's, this is a minority central. Well, yeah, but we're here. Here we are. Right. It's we're, the we're now talking to the world, throwing the world. Right. Uh, I'm saying is that the thing that sustains this institution is that it is a haven for project uh, people. That is, they're accepted here, and they're not in the minority. So one possibility is I'm just wrong. No, um, I'm just saying is they're not. In which case. Uh, we're not going to get much further. And, 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 and another possibility is I just didn't say it right. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't be here as dean if you didn't have a project. Yeah, yeah, but we, but you see, you keep jumping to the end game, and I think you can't, okay, you can't get to the end because, because without disagreeing with a single detail of your argument, and now we've sort of fleshed it out, we've got a sense of what these definitions work and so on. Yeah. But one of the consequences of this model is that it Flip almost every dimension of it is flipped because even if a minority in every group and in every classification will be placed according to your rules on the project side and will be more involved in the generation of worlds than right. in the reacting to and mm -hmm. solving <laughs> worlds, nevertheless, even uh, no in such a that ratio, were I to leave this room or even this conversation we're having now or anything that I will do, it will be very, very difficult for me to locate anything that I might encounter that is not or could not have happened without a project. In other words, the original opposition between the world as right. being there, relentless, with momentum, having its own opinions, forces, realities, which could be listened to, versus the thinker, the creator, the philosopher, the thrower, uh, who wants to change that, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, the world is, is it's a far too comfortable yeah. opposition because the world no. itself, which it's is the what summation I, is, of all it, past projects, is nothing but accumulated it projects. projects it's which is what I mean by and, and you know the stock market is the is almost a too easy example yeah. of of a, 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 a of a project in which in which uh, uh, more than any other architectural school you will find. Um, Experts are sitting there going, what the hell is actually happening here? And they say, well, what I think is happening is it's, a, it's the world, the world of, of, uh, of projects. And hypothetically, they believe, that they believe themselves to be referring to um, a, okay. a kind of worldly condition that may be even more worldly than the uh, earthquakes. Okay. Now, let's, let's sun accept that. And so on, right? Let's say that the world that we're talking about, that we're throwing this mm -hmm. project right. into, is the summation of all past projects. As, as, that's what the world right. could be defined as. Well, there are no, no, many worlds. Many worlds. Okay. What I'm saying is that in order for those, the peop that those which have survived, there have been a multitude right. of the people not in the world who have not survived. In other words, whose voice has not been heard. Right. Right. Okay. So I'm saying is that the world always is the summation of those people who have survived. Not sure. I mean, uh, almost. Uh, if, if, if the, the, the pro going back to the project team, the, pro the project team relies too easily on the thought 
that the world is what it is and can, and can then be counted, resisted, overcome, transcended and so on by the project. The, 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 the practice team um, um, almost cynically acts as if the world yeah. has no agenda, has no right. theory, has no ideology, has no position, <coughs> uh, and such that their own work is then rendered innocent. Uh, uh, Which so, we know it is. So, for example, in your opposition between Rossi and Sterling, uh, um, uh, uh, Sterling, and one could name so many other architects, is, is, is able to, to position their work as some kind of craft with available uh, forces, cultural, technical, and so on, uh, 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 negotiating and acting as a kind of uh, uh, silicon linking uh, mm -hmm. and you know a, a sort of microclimate of, of, of situations versus uh, Rossi, who everywhere through time and through history, one could imagine if he was commissioned in ancient Greece, one knows what right. he would have done. Yeah. Um, uh, each 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 relies on, on a kind of f false image, it seems to me, and and well, so I so this is what this is finally how I, I think one could get back to the school, because the opposition between the project and the um, and the practice so often so often uh, uh, is simply um, how does one in any work that you're doing set up the definitions of the context or the nature of your practice? I the moment I start, I make some definitions of world, mm -hmm. and in that moment, I have already even false right. I've already launched right. uh, a kind of a project, and I've launched it in doing exactly the opposite of what seems like a project. I'm saying, well, first, on the I have a table, I have water, and I have a microphone. I pretend to just point to the right. world, but the way I point, how I select, what I see, what I don't see, already absolutely redefines and creates the possibility the, uh, of another world. world. So many, many times, and this is a consequence of what both of us not have been saying so far, not only can we make this division between those who really want to define themselves in terms of project, in terms of the throwing of a, of a world versus the accommodation to the existing world, um, you can have within each camp real stupidity uh, in other words, uh, it would be a sh huge mistake to, as it were, uh, side with the project team and say all is good there. Right. Because you can be infinitely stupid on that side and infinitely stupid on the other side. And that seems to me a lesson in, in an architecture school. That in the end, the opposition is not simply between, um, it's not a matter of choosing uh, project versus practice. Project very, very easily becomes practice. To, to, give, to give an obvious example, um, the evolution of theory in uh, architectural discipline uh, since the 70s or whatever, a history you played uh, a huge role in, you could argue that that was a project, for sure. Yeah. Uh, not only was it a project, it was a project to support the whole idea of project. Right. Right. How to set up a mechanism by which there'd be a sort of intellectual infrastructure for generating and supporting this kind of action we could argue that it relatively quickly became a normative form of practice. Okay. That is to say, there's a lot of people who would self-identify as theorists yep. who could not have done so without what you guys did, and you in yeah. particular did in the 70s, and yet nothing about the work they do really constitutes uh, the throwing of a world. So let's talk about the marketplace, yeah. okay? Because that's where we, and the marketplace for students, right? If we did a ballot uh, of our students at, right. uh, at Yale, let's say, and I have to only speak for them, uh, they are, n they, and they say, who do you want for your critic? They're not so much concerned, f uh, by the way, and this is one of the reasons for raising this today. Right. Uh, they're not so much concerned that an architect either have a practice or a project. They're concerned whether that architect has media, that is, is hot. All right, their, their, their favorite architect would be Bjarke Ingels, okay? Because he's hot. Now, I don't think Bjarke Ingels has a project, okay? But my students all think that he is, that whatever it is that they want to be, uh, and they don't make this distinction between project and practice, that's who they want to be teaching them, okay? Mm -hmm. 
even if he can't teach, right? <laughs> That's what they want. So uh, I'm saying is that what has become cloudy in the marketplace of students, and it may not be in Nebraska the same, but the kids up at Yale are pretty sophisticated and they can tell the difference. They would rather have Bjarke Ingalls uh, than, for example, David Chipperfield, right, who's coming. Uh, they would rather have Bjarke Ingalls than Leon Creer, uh, who's coming, or Dimitri Porfirios. Uh, okay, yeah, I see you. I think we better get back to the safe territory of, <laughs> of uh, Barcelona versus Real. No, no, <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm saying is that uh, if you took a media poll of who they want, uh, they don't make the distinction between project and practice. By the way, it's become confused to them because project is not clear today. In other words, that was the last, I mean, in other words, uh, well, I don't think the primary purpose of an architecture school... Um, one of its purposes is to find that difference, I would argue. I don't, I don't think the, the primary purpose of an architecture school is to um, produce um, or support the production of... Uh, or even the work of the students. By no. which I mean, oh, I understand. before it's misunderstood, <laughs> no, no. the real obligation of a school like this one... Is to produce knowledge. Yeah, is, is the development of the no. discourse. The assumption here is... Or the discipline. The students will redefine the field shortly after they've been here, but in ways that could never have been uh, uh, predicted or even supported <laughs> while they were here. So rather, what happens is that when the students are here, they collaborate with the faculty to generate new knowledge and new potentials. Yeah. And the students use that uh, experimentation, not even using that knowledge to generate here, to come up with their own thoughts about how they will act in the world. This is a... Uh, oh, it's not just Columbia. You've got to give me you're, a minute. You're, you're giving your Columbia Dean speech, and it's not just... Mm, always. Uh, uh, <laughs> But it's important distinction between a school that would see itself as you said yourself professional, yeah. right? Uh, in other words, if you have a school, imagine that you wanted to have a school that had a project using your rules. Um, I think that would be really difficult. That's I mean, there are schools with a project. Miami has a project. Notre Dame has a no, project. No, that's a practice. No, no, it's no, a project. No, that's a practice. That's no, a practice. No. That's no. totally uh, academic in, I mean, I would, I think the word academic would be associated with uh, what you call practice. Yeah, but it, I, I would argue that it's rule, to have it's, it a school of tendency. It's a school Let's Let's talk rules. about a school of tendency, of which is yeah. what Miami and Notre Dame. No, no, they have rules. Yeah. They have rules. They it's, have it's, rules. You know, um, yeah, you can do things one way, right? So, 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 I think you can you 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 can have a school that um, whose whose um, main interest, let, w let's say, might be what you call project, but in this moment of time, such a school could only accomplish that mission by engaging fully. fully with what you define as practice, because... Uh, uh, no, you said last the year... World, as a the no. world is weirder, weirder than almost any yeah, architecture but you school. you said last year that education was a bump in the real world, that it shouldn't engage itself with practice, that it was a place to slow down moving toward a practice. That was last year. No, 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 no. Yeah, you did. No, 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 no. It was a speed bump. You no, used no, no. Those. I could make some I money here. How much, I, how much you money? No, no, no. No, the thought that the, the traditional, I can I repeat it, the traditional mechanism of a university is to pull yourself out, out. in order to reconnect, right? right? The, but the pulling out of the um, uh, circumstances in order to reflect and, and reconnect, in the in, in past, and not in the very distant past, meant opening up a huge gap um, between, um, let's say, uh, the profession okay. and experimentation. You're saying the speed bump was in the past. I think it's it's a very different moment oh. now. It's a moment in which um, the biggest experiment in human history is being carried out, which is the which is the formation of the city of the future, uh, a city that will 
in some way try to absorb 75% of the world's population, we know less about that city than we do about Mars, and we're moving towards that city of the future yeah. faster than we're moving towards Mars, okay. but it's <laughs> like this. And in that moment, um, uh, 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 there's a kind of flip of identity where um, a school devoted to research and experimentation goes deep, deep into worlds normally understood to be very distant from them, okay. right? There's a sort of a flip. The reverse is also true, that, that uh, professional officers um, have to go deep, deep into reflective experimental research in ways that they never had to do before. So this is just a weird moment of, 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 of our, we of our need present. To, we, yeah. we're, we're at time, but I, I wanted to, to disagree. We haven't disagreed about much yet. Uh, I believe that the role of the school is to create in a student's consciousness a capacity to understand that when he or she leaves school, because of what they've learned, they know nothing. Uh, and that the beginning of learning, the capacity to begin to learn is in fact after school, that you learn nothing in school, but the capacity to know that you know, and that to me is an education. When you can finally say, I don't know anything, because it's very difficult to say that, you have really learned a lot. Oh, I totally agree. I think, and as you know, I think a school is a, or a good school is a stupidity reduction machine. Right. Um, well, and we should, we and should, its, uh, its primary purpose is, is to increase the odds. All you can do is increase the odds that the students that you collaborate with while they're here, um, you know, just have slightly better odds of of developing new forms of knowledge af after they leave. After. And that new forms of knowledge will be will be by definition in some world defined as practical as practice. No question. But it can flip in a in a in a in a I microsecond see. into project and and. But it and seems it would seem from our discussion, if I were in the audience, that we are trying to blur the distinction with the two. But I think the distinction helps you ultimately to make that uh, definition of new forms of knowledge. And, uh, it's one of the distinctions. The reason why I put it on the table is really useful because there are people whose goals. In, in learning are uh, to get a successful practice, not a successful function. And I would say that the, the general norm would be toward becoming a successful practitioner. I mean, the model would be X, Y, and Z. Uh, and we all know who those people are. Right. Uh, but maybe a final wrinkle, and we should join join in with the audience. But I think, yeah. and maybe this is just a not a very interesting way to say it. But if you take the accumulated, you know, we can divide up all of our colleagues into one team or the other. But if you take all of the, if you take the architectural discipline as a whole, somehow, the net effect of that discipline is paradoxically more on what you call the project side than on the practice side, even if by definition, by the rules of the game, m more members of its community must be on the so-called practice side. Because in the end, the position of the architect um, relative to what used to be called society does remain marginal um, and is perhaps only valued to the extent that it has the characteristics of project. And this is, a, this is an important twist. Even those people you yeah. name that are uh, on the so-called practice side, even they receive the commissions they receive because their clients see them to be on, on the, the project side, side, see them to take something uh, straightforward, ordinary, direct, functional, technical, logistic, infrastructural, and give it uh, uh, intelligence, beauty, art, uh, dignity, rhythm, and all these things. So there, this is the other paradox, that within our field, we can make these divisions between uh, project and practice, but in a, in a wider scheme of things, I think the architectural field is profoundly on the side of project. We, and you have almost made the point yourself because the people that you have identified um, as the kind of key figures on the 
project side, these are the people who have probably done most to define the kind of uh, uh, intellectual infrastructure of our right. field. Vitruvius, Alberti, Claude right. Perrault, uh, uh, et cetera. So, so basically, the, the in as much as the discipline is a discipline, it, it is project, okay. according so to let's, you. Let's even if, uh, even if most of us... Then I have to have an, another uh, footnote. I would argue that you don't have to teach practice. <laughs> uh, you don't teach, you have to teach banking. You may have to teach economics, but banking is another issue. In other words, many people don't believe you need to go to business school, uh, you learn economics, and then go into banking. I don't think you have to have a school that teaches practice. So therefore, I would argue that practice doesn't need to be taught. It'll, you, you'll learn how to practice. I believe I would be the best professional practice teacher in a school, uh, precisely because it's not something that you need to learn by uh, book knowledge, you'll need to learn by experience. Secondly, I wouldn't have anybody teaching in my school that didn't have a project, uh, because they shouldn't be teaching. Uh, they should be out practicing. Uh, school is a haven for the people who have a project. And I would imagine that 90% of your faculty and most faculties in private institutions have a project of some sort. That's why they're here. Yeah, it's hard for me not to do one last backhand because because <laughs> the of course what it's you say your nature. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what you say is so true because by definition practice cannot be taught because by definition according to your rules. Practice is that which allows itself to be defined mm -hmm. by the world. It is not the teacher. It mm. is. It is. So of course, uh, university is about teaching. It is, comes as a great shock yeah. to the audience. Should we have questions? Unless Reinhold, you want to? No, no, no. There's one back there. Okay. Um, is there a microphone? There's one. Hi. Yes. Um, I was wondering if. Uh, let's say, like, uh, I mean, since you guys use Barca and, and sports, just to tie it to, let's say, companies, do you think a company like Google is a project um, or a practice? Like, do you think that they're, they're a company that sets out to just, in, they, they basically envision they, they, the, um, a world, but they also go by, they go about um, a way in which they do it. You know, they actually make the world faster. Um, I don't know, that's something that I was thinking about? Well, for me, the answer is, is of course, yes, it's a project. But of course, uh, I ultimately think it's all a project, that the, wor the world is always, ever, only a world of dreams, of projects, layered, on, layered upon layer upon layer. And so the, the world is a uh, kind of archaeology uh, uh, of endless uh, projects. Google is a, gr it's a great question because, of course, um, in some sort of um, uh, information sense, um, Google, is, you know, starts to become a kind of surrogate for the world it, because it become it is the Google is the is what you can see, what you can search, right? So in the end, we have lost now the different. We've lost any distinction between w how to see and, w and uh, uh, how you see and what you see. So. Google is a world project, no question, I think. I, I, I don't think that defining Google, whether practice or project, helps us to define the idea of the difference between an architect in practice and an architect in project as I've defined it, that is, as the definition of the world. Google doesn't define the world uh, in fact, it is the world defining us. It is part of the world defining us. So I would say Google I is largely a practice, uh, an enormously, uh, like Wikipedia is a, a practice, right? In other words, my students uh, don't use uh, first sources anymore. They use Wikipedia. Uh, so it, 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 you're not going to ever develop a project from using Wikipedia, I think it's even a better, ex uh, a more insidious example. Uh, the first thing you get when you look up Google and you look up like uh, 
Lodely, like I would look up Lodely to find uh, a reference to his famous treatise, I get Wikipedia, okay? Now there's an insidious situation where uh, it's set up to give you Wikipedia uh, as opposed to a, a primary source, all right? So Google is insidious in that it covers up e primary sources, what I would call project sources, uh, to provide you with practical, time-saving uh, sources. So in, in that case, uh, for me, Google is precisely the Bernini of information technology. So that's one yes, one no. One yes, one no. <laughs> Good question. You want to try it? Go ahead. Are we talking about uh, projects Arist uh, neoplatonics and practice Aristotelian? Are we talking about the role of the uh, intellectuals and artists in the avant-garde in the old Marxist terms that the projects one have to go over and the practice are the other ones? Uh, everyone here has to have uh, tomorrow a label, every student thinking, I am project, I am practice, and they are a label on the, uh, on the head uh, thinking they are uh, project, they are practice. Uh, uh, you are saying Bernini is practice. Uh, so projects are the one who has a theory and has a project, the architects who are thinking uh, and writing, because I, I really don't care about what, uh, usually what the architects think. I care about what they do and what the architecture they do. I understand if you say uh, Rossi uh, is a project and I'm Monino. Uh, is a practice in the Galaratese, and let's, okay. let's take a project. Mm -hmm. okay. I am not so sure about uh, Rossi and Stirling, well, because one of the most poetic things I have seen were made by Stirling. Leicester was beautiful, yes. beautiful. I am not talking about the last uh, Stirling. Is Alvaralto project or practice for you? Because Alvaralto never knew how to communicate these things. He just made architecture a wonderful one. So. Uh, is good for a school to teach practice only. That has been the failure of Barcelona School. They were projects when I was a student in Madrid and Barcelona was wonderful because it was projects. Now they are only practice. Failure, absolutely failure. But a school has to teach practice. Uh, can creativity be taught? Yeah. And is linked a project to creativity or is linked a project to some intellectual uh, thing and intellectual construction of the world. I think uh, when Mark was trying to blur a little bit these things, these things are more blurred because it's more mixed. It's more mixed and afterwards people will redefine themselves in the real life uh, out of this uh, space of thinking and of reflection. But if we try to redefine one or the other, uh, we are putting in a stress that I don't think that is real. Um, if you take Venturi and Scott Brown's theory of the main street, which is almost all right according to them, uh, you don't have to go to school to learn about the main street. It will happen despite what you know. Whatever the main street is at any moment in time will always be. But the idea of the main street as a project is something that you could teach. You don't have to teach how to do the main street. You have to teach what the project of the main street is. And so there is a, I, I would never use Imanino to Rossi because Imanino is a lesser architect, let's say, you know, a wonderful human being, a lesser architect. Sterling was not a lesser, in fact, he's a better architect than Rossi. Why I use that thing is that uh, there was a consciousness in Rossi, like a consciousness, uh, Sterling's a better architect than Venturi. Venturi had a project, uh, a very clear project. 
doesn't mean he was a great architect, but he had a project. Uh, and I'm saying is that uh, we don't have to teach how to be a practicing architect because the world will define what that is for you. If you don't like that, already you have a practice. In other words, if you don't like the fact that I think the world defines practice, then you become a project architect. And it's the question of how you deal with the reality of what is imposed on you. Um, uh, you know, uh, I think that the idea of refusal, the idea of, you know, I, would you take X commission or Y commission, is, is uh, decisions that everybody has to make. Will you do certain things uh, to, to be successful? And I think that uh, those things are, uh, define the difference. There are differences, but you cannot teach practice, I don't believe. You can teach a theory of practice, but not which is project. So I, I'm not sure I agree with you. I don't know what the dean yep. or you. Uh, a project is loosely associated with a person at some point, but then it expands into the world and the person may have a link. Borromini may have a link to the project, but may not be attached to the project forever. While practice, it's very much attached to a person. Therefore, media can associate a person and a practice, and a person can be ha become hot. Like, you know, I, I, I was just thinking, when I was a student, MBRDB was the hardest thing. And I cannot remember the name of the, like I, I've been trying to say, what is the name of the person, the lead person of MBRDB? It's only been 15 years. Vinny Mas. Vinny Mas. Thank but you. Didn't, they didn't have a project, and that's why you can't remember. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it, it was, you know, he was associated with a project, the project of the small, medium, large project that that's didn't belong to him. Project. I know, I know, I know. But so he was associated with a project that took on, and we all know about it, and we all right. celebrate it. And he and media kind of like, but he became the practice of that project. Yes. So maybe. I, I would agree. I mean, M MDRV or whatever it's called, Motor Vehicle Department, uh, 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 was, was an outshoot of, of, it's a typical example, was the person with the project, uh, the, the Epigenes didn't, didn't either need one or couldn't have one, right? And you can find that. I mean, I, I'm very fond of an architect called Carlo Rinaldi who you could say followed after Ber Borromini and, and Palladio, et cetera. But Rinaldi didn't have a project. Uh, he had great buildings, but not a project. Uh, so uh, I think what I was trying to say is that what media has blurred today, where uh -huh. students think that MVRDV had a project, is we need in a school to be very clear what defines project as opposed to practice, and, and, and which has been, in a sense, blurred by media today, uh, where we think X architect had a project and they, they never did and never would. That doesn't mean they're not of certain value. I, I think that the discussion between project and practice might have been too complicated to say more simply that perhaps what we have is a distinction between a, a pragmatic versus a philosophical approach to architecture or to even any other type of disciplines where pragmatic architects are the ones that tend to practice and um, projectist or, or philosophical architects tend to projects. And evidently we have a spectrum that goes from practice to project and vice versa. We have different combinations in different people and different people can swing back and forth uh, among the poles of that spectrum. And what we have in history then is uh, eras in which 
when we mostly have doers versus shakers, that's one other way of distinguishing between practitioner, practitioners and projectists. If we mostly have doers, we, have, we may have an stagnant, uh, boring time in the discipline, whereas if we have a lot of shakers, we might reach a time of revolution. And if we have a good equilibrium between doers and shakers, we may have a good opportunity for reforms that might bring us closer and closer to the world that we envision as a better world. But in any case, one other thing that was missing from the discussion, I think, is the unpacking of the concept of project. Because it seemed as if project was always something to look for, that it, that it was good, that we should embrace, uh, that schools should have people that always advocate for projects. But projects can come in many shapes. There are projects and there are projects. We need to know more about the nature of projects because there are projects that are proactive versus reactive. There are most importantly projects that are progressive that rather than regressive. Sustainable development is a progressive project and I would argue that religious fanaticism would be a regressive project. So what type of projects are we conceiving of and nurturing in ourselves, our societies, and our schools? And uh, another comment would be perhaps all projects, in order to be projects, needs to be embedded with a certain ethics. That it is not sufficient for a project to have aesthetics, that is modernism versus postmodernism or Greek versus Roman, that you have to have a sense of a good or a better versus a, a worse world that you conceive through that project? Well, I, there's nothing I can disagree with what you said. I can't disagree, but I, I think Mark struck a chord for me when he said that the, 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 the project of today, if there is one in architecture, is that we don't have a way of understanding urbanity, the city that 75% of the world are going to be living in in the next 100 years. And we haven't made uh, any advances, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. in, in what that project would be. Uh, we could go through the history of architecture. There have been model projects, Ledoux, Le Corbusier, Filarete, I mean, on an infinite. Uh, we, we know the form of those ideal models, let's say, utopias, Fourier, etc. Where is that thinking today in, in the schools and in architecture? I don't see it. In other words, uh, in other words if you look at the, the new towns that are being built and proposed in China, aren't they variations of what we've known for the last 100 years? Uh, is there anybody thinking the city as a project? And, uh, and what would that mean? And there are a lot of people practicing in the city but not thinking the city. And so I think Mark's point that we know more about Mars than we do about uh, the, f the future project of the city, I, I, would, I would agree with that. I would think it's really frustrating to me that, uh, first of all, if you said to me, Peter, would you like to teach that course? I'd say, I can't, because I don't have an idea about that, okay? Uh, I can't teach that, and I don't know many people who could teach that course or open that up to speculation. I don't know any architects uh, who are either practicing or projecting today I know it ain't Main Street is almost all right, uh, and I know it ain't learning from Las Vegas, because uh, that can't do it. Uh, and so uh, I think Mark has hit me with a stone wall that I recognize, and that is uh, there is a distinction, and, and that's why when he says that, I say, aha, Mark, you've just confirmed the distinction I made, because uh, there are a lot of people practicing about the city, but not many of them have a project 
of the city. And, uh, uh, and the reason is that it is a difficult project. Uh, and I don't, and I think uh, to suggest that there, there is a, there are visions out there, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, just yeah. piggybacking on that, I, I, you make a lot of very important yeah. points. The two, two quick points in response. I mean, one is, uh, it's not clear to me that the world needs worldly architects. <laughs> I think the world would just do fine without yeah. worldly architects. Um, Nobody said they did. No, I mean, just, just as yeah. a sort of general rule, but the, world, the worldly architects do. Um, <laughs> Um, does the world need um, this other, other uh, if we can just for a moment stay with this stereotype, this, this uh, uh, the architect of the project, which is not by accident the architect of the book, because you th when your examples, Vitruvius, Alberti, mm -hmm. Palladio, Perot, uh, Piranesi, Rossi, these are the writers. Um, so the, these are not just people who use words, they are the inventors of the words of, of, of our field. So th there has been a lot of slippage in our conversation between this, uh, th the architects on the side of the project and the architects on the side of theory. And the opposition, instead of the classical theory practice, has become project practice, practice. right? So, so my gen general response would be, um, the world doesn't need uh, worldly architects, or to put it more precisely, it doesn't need that part of the worldly architect, which is exactly what the worldly architect says it is, worldly, it needs actually this other part of the worldly architect, which is hidden, which is more romantic, transgressive, more resistant, more um, uh, friction, more like a form of friction. And I don't believe, as a corollary of that, I don't believe the world would commission worldly architects, because by definition, a world doesn't need worldly architects, because mm. the world is the world. If the, uh, if the architect is worldly, you don't need that. What the world might need is whatever it is in the worldly architect that's not worldly. Um, but they which wouldn't is, commission which, that. Which is a lot, for example, yeah. in the case of Sterling, which is yeah. a lot. Um, even and if they he didn't did, commission him. Even if he doesn't <laughs> uh, write the books. Uh, but if you look in photograph after photograph after photograph of Sterling at who was standing beside him in so many different situations, they are the writers of the books. Um, not just the books about Sterling, but he was a great uh, carnivore of, of, of ideas. The, the second point is more about so this. Well, take Smithson. Yeah. Now, you, Smithson yeah. couldn't get a job for this. Who, he had a project. And Sterling and Smithson stand like this and were like this. Sterling was, a, I think, a better architect. Smithson had a project. Ellison or Peter? Uh, I, I'm sorry. I don't know. It's almost time to go. I don't, I don't really. All right. I, I don't, All right. We could but say the, no, we but the Smithsons is a great example because as super young architects, they got in a huge success, practical success at the beginning, yeah. which traumatized forever the, this relationship I between. I, I mean, I think it'd be a great I example to talk about. The ethics one, though, is more complicated because um, in, in a sort of strict sense, the person with the project cannot have ethics. Um, to the extent that the person with a project who's in the exaggerated sense we're talking about, who throws a world, yeah. cannot place that world under judgment without imagining an outside to that board. world. Right. So it is simply invent the world. So to have an ethical position involves you being able to evaluate the consequences of different projects. And in the, in the exaggerated sense we're talking about, uh, that can't happen. Um, um, which is why, as you point out, the, the, the greatest violence comes from uh, this pr project, right. uh, projective. No, nope. there you go again. <laughs> I don't um, think you mean that. So the, great, the greatest violence can come from this. So, so ethics itself um, uh, could be thought of as in, in, in project terms. Uh, and that's, that's something else to... to to, yeah. to, to think about. Uh, next question. We gotta go. Oh, we do? Okay, well, last, I mean, I thought you, last, you one. Know, last one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so then in this framework in which you're working or outside of it, what becomes of that thing that's been called a critical practice? So is but there a, a way- critical practice is a project. Well, that's, but, but then- The minute it's not just But isn't that practice. where the blur happens? And, and so well, suddenly- You, you could say that. 
Um, I mean, a project is not necessarily not a practice. It's a different form of practice. It is a practice. I mean, I would say that the Smithsons had a critical project and uh, Sterling uh, had a practice, uh, but it wasn't necessarily a critical practice. Um, I think critical, I said, was the operative term that all of these six projects that I listed were all critical of those things that had gone before. But then you had something like the Situationist movement that is engaging in a, a kind of practice that starts to blur the boundaries between the kind of practice. Well, if you say to. the Situationists are practicing architects, then I would say we're, oh, no, I'm just saying we're, just we're way out of uh, focus. What's the pra you know, you what would never practice? define them as practicing architects or practicing, you know, they, that was a project. The situation, the fact that you said the situationists, you know, were a project. So. Uh, well, to, to, to say some of what we've been saying in, in, in again, um, in disciplinary terms, the figure of the architect has been and it's been pinned again and again and again through routine after routine, institution after institution, has been pinned to the thought that an object can create an aspiration beyond itself, such that a building could take you out of the world, um, uh, or a doorknob, or it doesn't matter. Uh, that thought um, that an object can be used as a, as a sort of medium for departure to a new world as a form of aspiration um, is, is kind of built into every aspect uh, of our field and is <coughs> never more obviously than in a, in, a, in a school of architecture to the extent that Peter's opposition between uh, practice and project refers to the throwing uh, of a world or beyond the world almost by definition the field as a discipline is attached to the project side of your uh, uh, opposition. Um, almost and equally classically so, the idea of an architectural profession, which is, the one, of, is the, one of the youngest, newest aspects of your story, mm -hmm. um, attaches itself to that thing that you will call um, uh, practice. And it defines itself as a discipline in nervousness at the success of engineers in winning the confidence mm -hmm. of royalty in uh, constructing images of uh, uh, political authority and so on. So there is built up um, uh, um, in the moment of the birth of architecture schools like this one, this kind of opposition between practice and project, which in this school was embodied in the figures of McKim the um, um, disciple of Richard Morris Hunt who uh, did so much not only to build this building in which you're sitting now, but in so much of American professional practice at that time. And on the side of the project was William Ware, right. another disciple of Richard Morris Hunt who argued for research and for the production of history and the production of books. So in this school there's always been this uh, unbelievable tension um, between a school formed around the model of what you call project um, uh, uh, in the kind of um, seething cauldron uh, in 1881 of a nation trying to understand where the hell things were going. And in that moment of time, the United States was 29% urbanized, having been 15% urbanized 40 years before, and by 1920, it would be 50% urbanized. So right in the middle of rapid urbanization, this school was placed and, and then struggled with the relationship between practice and project as, as you <coughs> defined it and, and has always been profoundly on the side of project. In this particular moment of history when the, world, the entire planet is 50% urbanized and it's six times bigger than it was in 1881, that opposition uh, doesn't help. Um, in, in philosophical terms, I think the opposition always somehow collapses once it's examined, always blurs, always, as Clara was saying, always multiplies and overlaps and confuses. 
Nevertheless, the discipline is still structured around it, which is why I think it has been um, super important to hear, uh, as it were, Peter's angle on this uh, all too classical uh, uh, opposition and, and um, how schools should or not react to this. My, my only thought is hopefully in, in a kind of um, biodiversity of ways. In other words, every school will, will run an experiment mm. with this uh, 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 transformation. But I will, obviously I play on the project team, obviously. Um, and so I'm bound to say that those who play on the practice team only pretend or only veil their um, absolute desire to um, uh, throw uh, a world. Right. Uh, and, and, and they just veil it a little bit. But equally it's true that those on the project team uh, disguise to which the extent to which they are consummate professionals, consummate practitioners, which is why I don't think it's such a paradox that Eisenman, who's, who's the very flag-waving, cheerleading member of the project team, is the professor in practice um, somewhere else. Anyway, it was nice to hear Peter again, and, and very kind of you to come and put up with us. Thank See you, you again next year. Thank you. Just to, uh, to put an exclamation point on, on this, uh, I hope that this has been a useful introduction to things going on in this room and beyond. Um, as, uh, speaking of cities, as London burns, nevertheless, the question may still be, is Fabregas going to Barcelona or not? Uh, but uh, you can ass be assured that the people doing the burning are asking that question themselves. The, the, uh, the, if you're deciding which, P to, which, uh, which uh, tattoo to get on your forehead, I would suggest a P. Um, for obvious reasons, and do come back for the various events uh, going on. And Gavin uh, Browning back in the back is uh, in charge um, of Master of Ceremonies during the rest of the year. You'll be hearing more from him and from the Buell Center as, as we uh, enter the actual academic year. Enjoy your summer. Uh, thanks for coming.